welcome back to the Brew Evolution. Today we have three different beers, good for a springtime mix. Starting off with Wachusett, it's Quinn's Amber Ale. Now this is a Amber Ale. As you can see right now, it's pouring out pretty nicely. Next up on this we have Harpoon. It's got a Celtic Red. As I pick these out for you guys, the reason I call this a springtime mix is because it's going to be kind of lighter, different than an IPA from last episode. Something good that you can relax to in the springtime. Have a few beers or so. Have a barbecue, whatever, anything. Just lounge, lounge about day and just have a good beer or two while enjoying the nice warmer weather from the winter uh, abode. Uh, the last one we have here is the Würzburger uh, Julianus Echke um, Hefeweizen, and that's going to be a wheat beer. Hefeweizens are made with a lot more wheat, uh, mixed in with barley, um, depending on the brewery you go to. It's going to have that nice ratio of barley to wheat. Um, this uh, have of Eisen's in general I just love. Uh, it's something about them that just always draws me to it, and I think it's the perfect uh, springtime and summer beer. <clears throat> Alright, so going on to this uh, with our first one, the Wachusett's Quinn's Amber Ale. Ooh, first thing about this, um, the head dissipates really fast. It's not that good um, in that respect. It has 4.8% for ABV, as well as a 19 rating on the IBU, so it's not going to be that bitter. Um, if you're getting into beer for the first time and don't like the bitterness, this might be a good starter beer for you. Um, can't really get the match to the scent from it. It's like, first sip I get out of it, it's really watery. Um, it's not that dark for an amber ale. It's more copper color, burnt like gold. Uh, something that I would not consider an amber ale right away. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's just like, it tastes really watery right up front. There's not much of a, um, an aftertaste, a finish to it, if you will. Um, it does have some caramel notes to it. I want to do say this is a good, like, springtime drink. Uh, other than that, it's just not one of the beers I would go for right away. I usually I go for ambers. They have those nice malty caramel notes to them. This still has it, it's just lacking in a lot of other areas. <laughs> Next, we're going on to the Harpoon um, Celtic Red. Now, this is pretty good. It has 5.4% ABV and a 26 IBU to it. As you can see, it is a very deep mm, brown reddish color that it has to it. The head dissipated rather fast, just with the um, amber over here. But where that lacks, this makes up for, so. Oh, delicious, delicious, delicious right there. Um, when I think an amber ale, this is definitely, it has all that right flavor aspects to it that this one is lacking. Um, especially in the color department, like, <laughs> when you drink an amber, this is what you want to see. I know it's an Irish red, but still, they're going around the same lines there. Ah, definitely with the, the caramel notes, with the maltiness in there, it's it hits a rut on the dot. Um, Harpoon Brewery does really amazing things. They're right out of Boston, so they're local to where I am. This is probably one of the more recent um, brews. I know that it's seasonal, so both of these are in the cheap seat for the next couple weeks because they're most likely going to be on sale. Um, I don't know, it just has these really nice, like, the bitterness isn't too overpowering, it has a nice zesty notes to it, and it finishes really well with that. Um, yeah, no, like, again, if people, like, you have friends that have turned off from uh, hops or anything, this is definitely a beer you want to give to them, because they will appreciate the deep flavors within the caramel and the maltiness. Alright, and finally we have our Hefeweizen. 
the one uh, Julie Echer Hefeweizer. Uh, I know this one does come in two different styles. You have the the Hinners and then the Dunkel. The Dunkel is going to be a lot darker. Dunkel um, being German for dark, Hinner being German for light. So this is the Hinner, uh, the lighter of the two. Um, as you can already tell, it's a very nice golden color. It's very opaque and cloudy. That's going to be thanks to the wheat that they use in it. Um, I know Germany has specific laws regarding beers such as the Reinholdsgebot. Um, this is going along the same lines and to be determined as a half of Isa, um, it needs to go through certain regulations and guidelines to have that name onto it. So anyway, normal standard with uh, mm, half of Isens is that uh, immediately as you smell them, it's got to be citrusy, it's got to be nice, mm, you get that nice weedy smell to it, the citrus is, the citrus notes to it, it's just, it's amazing. Ah, the head is always got to be nice and frothy, as you can see it took a while for it to dissipate, and uh, it's definitely key importance to know how to pour your head of Eisen's. If you over pour it, there's going to be a lot of head, and that's just going to foam out everywhere. Um, but immediately, as you take your first sip, oh my god, you can taste the, the wheatness, the, the citrus right up front there, and then you have the distinctive German beer taste. So the body with this, it's a good body, it definitely has that nice feel to it, it's... Definitely that ale consistency of not too thick, but not too thin like a lager. Um, it goes down so smooth. If you are new to introducing your friends into craft beer, and they've always drunk like Bud Light, or all those really terrible industrial light lagers, um, this is the one to try and convert them with. Usually all the people that I've converted from those crappy beers of the good beers have started with a Hefeweizen just because it's an easy drinking beer. That's why I'm suggesting it for spring and summertime. Alright, and now I want to talk to you about uh, glassware for beer. So pretty much to start off we have your standard pint glass, these guys right here. It's the standard American pint glass. Now, the problem with this is that it's not an actual pint. Uh, it holds 12 ounces of beer, uh, or liquid for that matter, um, and that's not a full pint. A full pint is 16 ounces. This is going to be an actual pint glass. See the difference? This is a little bit wider. Um, it's going to hold a lot more, uh, four more ounces of fluid in there. And as you can see, it's about the same height. This is a little bit taller, a little bit wider. Glass is a little bit thinner. Uh, initially, this American Standard pint glass was made for the shaker. This is a Boston shaker right here. What you would do is do this, and it mixes up drinks. Something that uh, not many beer enthusiasts are too happy about, but there are beer cocktails out there. Um, I will cover that in a later episode. Something that um, could be quite interesting. So next up on the list, we have the Samuel Adams lager glass. So this is a good glass to get into. It brings out the flavors of the lager, um, especially here with the lip that bends out right there. That's going to bring out the flavors uh, and the aromatics. Um, the laser etching on the bottom, that's going to bring the carbonation to do whatever the hell it does. If you're a beer newbie, I'd say go get one of these if you want to get into beer, just because it's got to be one of the most uh, universal glasses you can use for a lot of things. Our next one up on the list is a Pilsner flute. Um, generally, <laughs> generally this thing is used for Pilsners. Uh, I may use it in the program later on just because it's a nice presentation and it does hold a full 16 ounces in it, so it is an actual pint. Um, it does well with Pilsner's Lagers and all that fun jazz. Next up we have a Chalice. 
Yeah, these things, they're going to be amazingly perfect for Belgian beers. Um, Belgian beer is notoriously some of the best beers in the world. Um, this isn't just strictly limited to anything from Belgium. It's anything that's in the Belgian style. Like if uh, you want to go for the double as well, or even a triple or a quad, this is going to be the right kind of glassware that you want. And then bringing this guy back in the mix, Stein, or a mug. Stein is German for stone. This is pretty much what it's made out of. Um, don't know the exact material, but um, these are going to be good for like any kind of ale, really. It's in one of the universal um, use-me-for-anything kind of glasses, um, such as like what a pint glass would be. And so, last but not least, we have a Weizen glass. Pretty much it's going to be elongated um, glass with a spread right out of the top. That's going to help out with the aromatics. It's going to help out with the head to it. And it's going to bring out the most of what a Weizen could be. You can tell which one I like because I've been drinking it the most. <laughs> um, this guy not so much. Oh, so before I leave you today, we have a few cool terminology that would be really nice to show off to your friends if you want to be a beer snob or if not just whatever just general knowledge one of those trivia nights or something okay so senosilicaphobia is the fear of an empty beer glass uh then next up is zythology spelled z-y-t-h-o-l-o-g-y now this is the study of beer and beer making this will be how about particular ingredients play in the brewing process. A zenthologist is a student and connoisseur of beer who processes knowledge of ingredients, pouring techniques, and beer pairings. Um, easily I can tell you what would go well with each of these. Uh, for example, the watch shoes it, that would go good with, I want to say, like, maybe duck or poultry. It's a little bit lighter, it'd go really well with that. The maltiness isn't too bad. Um, the harpoon, let's say you'd have a good steak. Um, a good steak or mushrooms go really well with this. And then the half of Eisen, let's say chicken piccata or some fish dish. Anything fish, uh, that's going to be like white meat fish, not uh, salmon or tuna or anything. Please subscribe to my channel. Put some comments into the comment section below. Um, I want to hear your feedback. I know I've gotten you guys on other streams and media, forums, uh, Reddit, uh, cool things like that, but I want to hear what you want to see in the channel below. Um, it helps out. It, it makes it so that people understand people are watching this and want to see it. Please do that. Uh, let me know what you want to see because this channel, I like educating you guys, and you know what? It's honestly a show for you. I'll rate beers if you want me to only rate beers. I'll also educate you if you want to be educated about this stuff. Um, initially, I got this show started up to be educational, to be entertaining. Um, so tell me what you want to do. I'll probably do it. <laughs> um, I know one of the comments I had from my last episode is that... <laughs> Chugging the beer was a bad idea at the end, and <laughs> granted, I did understand that as soon as I chugged the last one. Um, but for a different reason, you, IPAs are supposed to be savored. Completely understand this concept. Uh, I completely agree with that, too. I'm king of the beer. King of the beer. <laughs>